Hey guys, welcome back to GuitarAnimal.com. This is Trent, and today I'm going to show you seventh intervals. We use these uh, to make seventh chords, and I've gone over some of this in some of my Chords Beyond the Sea videos, you may have, have noticed, but I didn't really talk about what seventh intervals were. So before we build seventh chords, which is going to come up in another video, I'm going to just show you how to figure your seventh intervals today. Basically what we're looking at here is a G major scale. If you don't recognize this as a G major scale, Stop the video here, go back and study the scale videos first because you'll need to know that information. This video assumes that you know that information, all right? All right, so we're looking at a G major scale, and our first seventh interval that we're going to look at will be from the G note, the root note, all the way up to the seventh note, the F sharp, in our G major scale. Any major scale will have this, by the way. The root note up to the seventh note in the major scale is a distance of five and a half whole steps. So five and a half whole steps, and that equals what we know as a major seventh interval. The M is bigger than the seven, so that is written as major seventh, read as major seventh. So five and a half whole steps is a major seven. Now, when we're trying to calculate a large interval like this, measure it, five and a half whole steps, and we just have our guitar in our hand, we're not working on paper, this is somewhat cumbersome to deal with. So, the way we deal with it is this. The root note and the octave note are the same note, G. So rather than measuring the long distance, let's look over our shoulder. G and G are the same. We're going to look back over our shoulder, and if the note before the G is only a half step back, in other words, as it is here, F sharp, then that would mean that the F sharp would then be above G, five and a half whole steps, because from G to G in an octave is 12 half steps. The way that are six whole steps. And that makes sense because if you play the open note on your guitar and then you play the 12th fret on the same string, that's 12 frets or six whole steps, 12 half steps, keeping in mind that every fret is a half step. So again, what we're doing here is the G root note and octave are the same note. We look behind the G. If the note, the previous note before the root note is a half step back, then that means it's a major seven above it. Now the other seventh interval that we're interested in is a minor seven. A minor seven interval, an example would be if we're going from say a G to just an F note, not what you would find in this particular scale, but in other scales you would find this interval. This distance would only be five whole steps. And we can use the shortcut again. If we look behind my root note and then the previous note is a whole step back as an F, a whole step, then that would mean that the next F above G would be five whole steps. So that's a minor seventh interval written with the M smaller than the seven, minor seven. So what we're looking at here are major seventh intervals and minor seventh intervals. Now I play a couple of these on my guitar and I've got a video for you that will be embedded in this. You can take a look at it and see what or hear what they sound like. I did them in A, I did them in D. I didn't really do them in G, but the idea is the same. If we're looking at two notes where the one note is the root note and the other note would be the seventh above it, five and a half whole steps higher, that's a major seventh interval. If the root note has a note above it only five whole steps, that's a minor seventh interval. And the way that we really figure these out is looking behind the root note to see what the short distance is here. In other words, if you imagine a pie and there are eight pieces, and you go to work, you come home, there's one piece left. You don't have to really count all the pieces that are missing. You know there were eight pieces, you only have one piece left, seven of them are gone, somebody ate all your pie. So sorry about your luck. But here, no pie, we're just looking at how far is the distance behind the G to figure out how far that distance would be above the G to the next octave. Keeping in mind, these are recurring notes. In other words, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, and then it would do again next octave, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. So you not only have an F sharp above the G, but you would also have an F sharp below the G. All right, I hope that this made sense to you guys. Again, you can slow this video down, watch it as many times as you need to. The, the gig from this is basically what is a major seven? What is a minor seven? A major seven is a distance of five and a half whole steps. A minor seven is a distance of only five whole steps. We will be using both of these intervals when we're figuring out our seventh chords, which is coming up next in the series. All right, guys, so here's what the seventh intervals sound like. I'm gonna do them clean. I'll play them uh, distorted as well. This is gonna be, I'm gonna start out with an octave. This should be an octave on A. This should just be your fifth fret on your sixth string, seventh fret on the fourth. That's an octave. Our major seven sounds like this, half step lower. And then that sounds
sounds a little cringy by itself, but if you include it in a chord, it works. So that's a major seven interval. We're playing the fifth fret A to the sixth fret on the fourth string, which is a G sharp. That's a major seven. A minor seven would be a half step lower where I'm going A to G. So let's listen to that distorted. Major seven. And let's do minor seven. So a distance of five and a half whole steps for the major seven. And only five whole steps for the minor seven. We can do them in D as well. Do the open fourth string to the second fret of the second string, major seven. Or a minor seven, open fourth string, first fret of the second string. That would be a D to a C. I play some chords with those in it. D major. D major seven. You see that that cringy interval kind of sounds good when you play it in a chord. D major seven. And then a D seven, which would have the minor seven in it. Very nice sounding chords. So those are what your major and minor seventh intervals sound like and how to find a couple on the guitar. Hope you're enjoying this series, guitaranimal.com.